Okay. So, if you are an entity that, whether it's, um, you've just been here a few times, or you've really started to get hooked on this, or you've been here a long time, you are what I call a human. And this is not a cut by any means. It simply means that you are a being that enjoys the game. This particular game. This dot of a game. Right here. You're going into this game. Okay? And a star seed is a being that has come here for a reason that were called for for assistance by Gaia to do a certain job. They didn't come here because they were drawn in by the game and they came here for the game. They came here to help Gaia. So even though they prefer all these other games out here, remember, this is one star in the sky and the, all the rest of the stars are other games that you can play. They prefer other games out there, Starseed does, but they came to help Gaia. Okay? So they haven't been here very many times. Star Seeds don't. The more times you come back into the game, no matter what layer you go into, the better you get at the game. That's that's just true because of the the nature of the dualistic linear time space, the way the game is laid out. So the more times you play it, the better you get. It's kind of like the more you drive a car, the better you get. Long-term humans have been here the longest, and they are very good at the game. Whether they are playing the game as a successful human or unsuccessful, they're very good at the game. Mid-range humans are moderately good at the game. Uh, Short-term humans have just started the game, so they're not that good at it. But their world's better than Starseeds. Starseeds Star are noobs. Yeah, star seeds are noobs for all you gamers out there. <laughs> Serious noobs. A star seed has n I've never seen or heard of a star seed that has ever been here on any of their timelines more than 10 lives. And 10 human lives is nothing in the scheme. A noob has been here 5,000 lifetimes. I mean, a single human lifetime is very, very short whenever it comes to playing in this game, within this game. And there are beings that die and come outside the game and then kind of get their feet under them and then go back. And that's how they do their lives. And then there are the hardcore ones that never come out. They loop in what you call reincarnation. They loop within the game. They just keep coming back, life after life. Die, next life. Die, next life. They never come out of the game for... Millions upon millions of lifetimes. Those I don't, would be hardcore veteran gamers. Yes, these are hardcore veterans gamers that are still living in their basement <laughs> of their mom, <laughs> and they're 45 years old. And, yeah, those are hardcore gamers right there. No, uh, no insult, Matt. She's a gamer. 30 years old, except I live at her house. Well, <laughs> actually in her driveway, really. <laughs> so, okay. So, now... When I say within the game, everything that you think you know, all of these people that say 3D, 4D, 5D, uh, dimensions, or what's what's the other word they call? can't remember. It's dimensions, and they use another word oh, um, for something else. Anyway, yeah. those are all within the game. When I say within the game... 3D, 4D, what you don't know about 2D, 1D. Humans have slapped this arbitrary number, 3, onto this vibration that they're in, and I've continued to use it, as do many others. And then we've moved into 4D because it's really a completely different kind of dimension. Um, so I've gone with it. It's definitely, we're not in 3D anymore, folks. We are in 4D, and you have been for a while. Uh, whether you know it or not, and that's how it happens. You've gone from 3D to 4D and didn't even realize it happened. That's how going to dimensions are. It's, it's a gradual thing. But everything that you've heard of, angels, demons, Jehovah God, um, aliens of all sorts, um, every, everything that you can think of has is within this game. So all of that is within the game. 
Like I said, if there is a being over you in any way, shape, or form, if there's anyone trying to teach you something, that is all within the game. Because outside of this little dot of a game, you are a god. You know everything. There is no need to teach you anything. You live in now. There would not even be a concept of learning, which entails less learning and more turning, learning, which is a, is a time thing. And there is no such thing as time in, outside of this game. This is all within the game. So within the game, the only thing that is somewhat accurate would be the creator of this game. Now again, we're going to go with the yellow dot. I mean, the blue dot that is the tiniest star up there, and that is this game. And then look at all the other stars. Those are all other games. All those games have been created by beings just like you. Gods just like you. So before I start in on the creator of this tiny dot of a very unique game, I want to remind you that all of those other games are out there have also been created by creators just like you. I assure you, you have created your own versions of this game, other games, your own way, many, many, many times. You have also been a creator of games. Not exactly like this game, because there is nothing like this game, but you have been a creator of games. And as games go, it's rather small, even though we're talking about over there, where there's no such thing as small and large. But I don't have a word to explain it to you, so that you would understand, so we're going to use small. It's a pretty small game, okay? So, what happened was there was an entity just like you who had an idea just like all of us do when we have an idea and there's all of this energy there's all of this potentiality that's over in now time where all of us gods are and we can kind of do with it whatever we want and what we want is we want to pull parts of it in unique ways and say okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna here's all of the potentiality and I'm gonna take a dot from here and a dot from here 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 of the all the days I can have any dots I want there's dots everywhere going every direction but I'm gonna take these dots and I'm only gonna play with those dots I'm only gonna play with those dots and I'll bring all those together like this and I'm gonna start a game and that's how games are started. And then they just keep on using this dot, but you can go down all different directions with all of these dots. You can do so much with those dots. But you kind of put it in your mind. Nobody tells you you can or you can't. You decide when you're creating this, but you're only going to deal with these dots in this way. That's what you decide to do. And as a creator, you get to do that. Now you've done that, and what happens is now, you're just dealing with those dots, and now you've started your own game, and what will happen is other creator gods will go whizzing by you, and they'll see this game where you've just taken those dots, and they'll go, oh, that looks interesting. I think I'll go play there. So another... God will come in and they'll join the party. They'll join the party and join the party. Another one, another one, another one. And each one of these creator gods that pops into the party will have their own ideas and suggestions. All of this is vibrational, of course, and very seldom does it have anything to do with linear time space. So it's usually God's talking to gods. There's no amnesia here. It's just God's talking to gods. So they'll go, hey, what if we did this? And they'll have an idea of, here's the circle, and maybe we'll divide this part of the pie, and let's put a swirl in it. What do you think about that? And the God that started it will go, always the God that starts the game has the final say on what happens. Always. It's a polite thing. It's not a bossiness. It's not a power move. It's just politeness is what gods do. So this one will say, 
Hey, that looks interesting. Yeah, let's go for it. And everybody else will go, cool, let's go for it. Then somebody will say, well, why don't we go into this middle of this swirl, and why don't we go like this? And the god will say, okay, that sounds like fun. And then somebody else will go, well, why don't we twirl off of this? And the god will go, no, I don't want to do that. And they'll go, cool, we won't do that. You see what I'm getting at? That's how games are played. That's how games are played. All right? So let's go back to this game. Creator said, okay, I'm going to take this part of the all that is, and I'm going to play with that part. Just picked a part, arbitrary part of the all that is. Had all the vibrations available in this part. Here's the creator up here. No different, no better than you. No better than you. Just had a separate idea, started a game. No different than the other stars in the sky, okay? He said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to divide all of this vibration, a sample of all the vibration and all that is, and I'm going to divide it like this. You would probably recognize it more as this. What you would call the yin and the yang. That's, a, that's kind of a, a way to explain this first division of dualism. <coughs> Yeah, and he looked at that and went, well, wow, that's cool. That's not been done before. Nobody's done that game before. He's looking around, everybody going, hey, check this out. Right at the first move, he was drawing attention, and people started jumping over, going, yeah, this is cool. Now there's two sides. There's two sides. So the creator very quickly figured out that he was going to have to have some help because he already had ideas. Already had ideas. So he called in best friend. Best friend, because nobody else would have done it. So he called in his best friend. He said, hey, I need some help over here. Would you hang on to this side and keep an eye on this side? Because I'm going to divide all these these things into two sides. I need somebody to watch this side, because I'm going to watch this side. Best friend went, oh, you sure, and the creator said, come on, I did a solid for you back in the other game, remember that? And his best friend went, oh, okay, all right. So he agreed to hang on to one side, and the creator decided he, he'd kind of keep an eye on the other side, and then they, he made the second move. He made the second move that would be more like you would consider like this. And that division was more what you would know as... Masculine and feminine. Okay. First one was light and dark. Light and dark. Dark. Second one was masculine and feminine. And already we've got interest from the other gods coming around going, Whoa. We never thought of just taking all the vibrations in one game, exclu excluding part of the vibrations. They always took part of the all that is, but in this move, he took all the vibrations from the all that is and divided to exclude them from each other within a game. Oh, brand new thought. Cool move. Star got interest all over the place. So it was actually another god's idea. Another creator god came in and went, hey, I mess with time and space. What do you think about adding that? And the third move that was done was the adding of linear time space. Okay? Now this was the beginning of where you live on Earth. This was the beginning move. In the last move, the ending move was Earth as you know it. Because Earth as you know it went into the third dimension which was the lowest, densest form of breaking all this down. This is what we call fractally. This first move was a fractal. This was a fractal. All of this started dividing, 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 and like a crystal, looked like a crystal. Crystal, crystal, crystal. All of it dividing, fractaling way down until you got to 3D Earth. Now, Earth Gaia really agreed to go to 4D. She didn't agree at the beginning to go to 3D. But several things had happened 
in an attempt to get to 3D, which she volunteered for, but once the 3D was, the idea was God, she kind of was going to leave. But the creator talked her into staying, and once they tried like seven times, and he said, just one more time, just one more time. She said, okay, one more time, that's it. And it was actually on that time that it was obtained. The 3D was, they did get to the third dimension, what you think of as the third dimension. And she allowed that to go on for a while until um, the bombs dropped at Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And she went, oh, I'm out, I'm done, that's it. You're cut off. No deeper can you go. Okay? That's it. I'm done. I'm coming back out. And that's when the call was made. And star seeds started coming. Now, just because star seeds start, got the call in, in 1940, what was that, 5? 45, does not mean a star seed had to come in in 1945 or past it. You've got to understand, star seeds came from outside the game into a game that was playing with linear time space. There really is no such thing as linear time space. It simply is you seeing little squares of the all that is one at a time so fast that it looks like you're going through time space. So if a star seed wanted to come in and they were smarter than me, decided to come in and see what it was like in 2000 AD, they could, they could do that. Or if they wanted to come in at 2000 BC, they could do that. They could come in as a male, as a female. They could hop around, and the younger ones did that. They experienced life as male and female from around the world to try to get how the Earth had got there, how to help Gaia coming out. Me, I came screaming in. This is my first time with absolutely no experience. I am a newbie of newbies. <laughs> I am you a are noob the, You are of the, the ultimate noob. I am the ultimate noob when it comes <laughs> to being on this planet. I am an expert at outside this game. I am an expert on how this game was built. I am an expert on what the entities did when they came here. I can look at it from out side in all day long, but it is a completely different thing to be in a skin suit being stuck in linear time space. It is a completely different picture there. All right, guys, that, can you think of anything else I need to say? Uh, I think at this point you might overload them if you do any more. Okay, all right, so we're going to end that. That is B. Definitely, this is a rewatch multiple times. Please do rewatch this. Rewatch. 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 <laughs> Here, I'll be polite. Please. <laughs> please. Please, please, please. Can't even hard to be. Please rewatch. There we go. Please. Please. Please, please re-watch this video and the last video. I need you to really, really comprehend that you are a god and comprehend what is inside the game and what is outside the game and the difference. So that when I'm explaining something inside the game, you know that versus something outside the game a big difference between inside the game and being a human. Big difference. Big difference. When you die, star seeds, you do not stay inside the game. None of you. Zero. No, no. <laughs> uh, there is an exception. I actually met a star seed that has gotten enamored with the game and she is coming back into the game. But she's having a good time. Any of you guys and you know a guy star too. seeds that do not like it here, when you die, you will not be coming back. Stop worrying about it. You will not be coming back. Anyone that comes back knows exactly what they're doing. Okay? And you can be reincarnated within the game and not be human. You can not even be humanoid and be within the game. 
There's a lot going on within the game. All of that is within the game. Okay? I want you to really understand inside the game, outside the game. God status. Inside the game, outside the game. That is A and B of our ABCs. Okay? All right. That's it, guys. Um, yeah. I will see you later. I love you so much. Huge hugs. Bye now. And rewatch for this. <laughs> uh,